The Tesla Model Y has quickly become one of the most popular cars available to buy. One reason it has been gaining popularity as of late is because Tesla dropped the base price of the Model Y by $13,000. They ended up slightly raising the starting price recently, but now in the United States, if you qualify personally for an EV tax incentive, you can save up to $7,500 off when buying this vehicle. Today I'm going to review my experience with the latest version of the Model Y, let you know the pros, cons, and issues in my experience, and more, so let's get into it. Today I'm reviewing the 2022 Model Y. I purchased this vehicle towards the end of 2022, and Tesla is well known to not change their vehicles that much year to year. If they update the design, they'll do it whenever during the year, so the difference between the 2022 and 2023 Model Year Model Y comes with one single change. They have removed ultrasonic parking sensors for the new version, and as of right now, those are disabled on 2023 models. More on that in a minute, but other than that, I'm reviewing the exact car you can buy from Tesla today. To start off with, let's overview the Model Y's design. This is a crossover SUV, so it sits fairly high and fits a good amount of cargo, but it also feels pretty compact. Part of the ability for this car to be as compact as it is, while still providing great space inside is because it's fully electric. You have extra storage in the trunk and frunk since there's no engine. The Model Y is fully electric, meaning your primary method of charging will likely be at home, and then you can use Tesla superchargers or third-party chargers when necessary. In practice, owning my Model Y, I mainly charge at home and have it scheduled to charge during off-peak hours. Some of the general benefits of the Model Y are its 330 mile EPA range. This is higher than any EV its size, but it's important to always look into the real world range for an EV. From inside EVs, when they did testing of the Model Y traveling 70 miles per hour, they got a range of 276 miles real world, when at the time Tesla had quoted 316 miles. Many things can affect EV range just like they do with a gas vehicle, but it can be more noticeable with an EV since charging on the road adds a few minutes to a trip. And there isn't always a charger everywhere you look at this point. However, Tesla is constantly building thousands of superchargers and posts their new locations on their Tesla charging Twitter account. The Model Y is one of the safest cars you can buy. It has a five-star rating from NHTSA in every category and is also a top safety pick plus from IIHS. For Euro NCAP, they ranked the Model Y's adult occupancy 97%. They also ranked safety assist 98%. These make the Model Y the highest scoring vehicle ever tested by Euro NCAP. It's a really important thing to remember when shopping for a vehicle and often runs contrary to popular belief. The standard layout for the Model Y is a five-seater. To me, this is the best option. Everyone is fairly comfortable and there is great rear storage. They also sell a $4,000 upgrade for seven seats, but in practice, these seats are remarkably small. From the outside, you'll see standard doors, a powered hatch, and a manual hood to get to the front trunk. You'll also see eight cameras around the car, all of which contribute to Tesla vision. This is how Tesla enables safety assist features, autopilot, and more. Certain other features Features like Park Assist used to be enabled with ultrasonic sensors, but for the 2023 model year, Tesla removed those sensors. They plan to replace this functionality with the Tesla Vision system, pushed to customers through a software update, but the timeline of this change, originally announced in October, is unclear. Tesla did the same thing when removing radar, and autopilot functionality has mostly been restored today through software updates, so Park Assist should return with functionality parity to vehicles with USS sensors. But it's very much something to keep in mind as basic parking sensors are currently nowhere to be found on this vehicle when you buy it. That could change any day though. In any case, the Model Y has two comfortable front seats with basic adjustments and three in the rear. From the rear, you get a great view of the panoramic glass roof in the Model Y. As the driver, you kind of don't realize the roof is there, but you definitely do from the rear. Sometimes this roof can be a bit warm in the dead of summer, even though it comes tinted. The seats are all heated along with the steering wheel. I have the white interior, and so far it's held up really well. I haven't done anything special to protect these seats other than wipe it down once or twice with baby wipes. In back, the trunk space is large with two side covers and two under storage compartments. The one in the rear is very deep and the other is fairly shallow. Then you can fold the rear seats forward as needed for a full cargo pass-through. I fit a lot of cargo in there and it's really versatile. Overall, the interior is very minimal with the driver mainly operating the wheel and a few buttons on the wheel, two stocks, and then the screen. The screen controls most of what you do outside of shifting, initiating wipers, signaling, music controls, and autopilot controls. One of the best features of this car is that you create a driver profile. This saves all of your settings in a 
adjustments for literally anything you do on screen. If you adjust the vents, which you control from the screen, their positioning will save to your profile. If you adjust your lumbar support, your seat height, the steering wheel position, or side mirror position, their positions will save to your profile. It's very nice to have and makes it so you get in, the car adjusts to you personally, and you're on your way. This even saves your personal title, Apple Music, or Spotify accounts, and more. So the vehicle is entirely my wife's when she is driving it. She doesn't have to listen to my deep cut jazz albums, and the car is adjusted to everything she has saved across the full user interface. On screen, your main view is the maps on the right two thirds, and vehicle info on the left one third. The screen is very responsive, thanks to AMD processing, and overall is incredibly reliable to use. You really never face lag. There is no instrument cluster display on this vehicle, so the left one third of that screen is essentially this. It shows you your speed, charge level, gear selection, autopilot visualizations of the cars around you, and more. Music controls will pop up on the bottom here as well if you want them, and so will the blind spot cameras for the direction you are signaling. This is very helpful when changing lanes and something many cars have now. At this point, Tesla has updated the Model Y software a lot, and you'll get updates throughout ownership that improve things, fix things, and change things. Usually it's for the better, but you will start to notice with things like the blind spot camera that this 15 inch screen is getting a little full. Maps are powered by Google and incredibly powerful though. They give you a lot of flexibility for multiple destinations and different routing options and will automatically route you to Tesla chargers as needed for your trips. I've driven a lot of modern cars and this still beats all others with built-in maps. That is potentially one downside for you though, is that while great, this is the only maps available. There's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so the music apps and maps built into the Tesla are what you have. For other audio sources like Audible, you can stream over Bluetooth and once initially connected, this is very reliable by just tapping the Bluetooth option you can choose to have located in the dock. There are a lot of features on screen, so I'll link to a video detailing tips and tricks to get the most out of this car. First though, a couple things that are worth mentioning on the screen. Windshield wiper options are on screen. You can initiate them with the left stock, but once you need to change away from auto, you have to tap on screen. I find that in the Model Y, maybe like 75% of the auto features work great. The rest really need some work and have clearly fell on the back burner for Tesla's software team. Auto windshield wipers are one of those things. These just aren't reliable, so I find myself initiating them from the stock and then tapping on screen to change them more often than I want to. Another option controlled on screen is climate controls. There are no physical vents to move, so you always have to do this on screen. In my experience though, since your driver profile saves vent positionings, I literally never touch these. I just change the auto temperature at the bottom of the screen, warmer or colder. I often see people worried about features like that being on screen, but I'm really never touching it in practice. Headlights are another option controlled on screen. You can turn on your brights from the stock and this brings up the options, or you can just dial it in on screen. Auto headlights work great, but brights sometimes have issues. To me, these are the main things people don't expect to be mainly controlled on screen. In practice, I'm very used to it and I don't miss the physical controls since I use them so infrequently. The Model Y has this very interesting blend of feeling incredibly simple, but also having a lot to love. When you initially get in, it can be shocking at how little controls there are. This luxury car is really just a wheel and a screen, but then you drive it. I always say that driving the Model Y is the best part about it. The base long range Model Y gets a zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. It's incredibly zippy and has more power than most cars on the road. It's also completely silent, so that acceleration feels really fun. The performance model takes this down to 3.5 seconds and really launches you. In my experience though, I've found the long range Model Y to make the most sense. It has more range and the best ride quality. Ride quality in the Model Y is really great. If you've seen an older Model Y review I made with my 2020 Model Y, this may be shocking for you to hear me say. I couldn't believe how rough the ride was in that car, but now Tesla has made huge changes in this regard. The ride quality in the Model Y is now fantastic for a vehicle in its class. It's not as great as an air suspension, and there are smoother cars out there, but ride quality is great in the 2022 and 2023 Model Y. I find that the stock 19 inch wheels help the ride too. The 20 inch induction wheels look cool, but include shallower tires, which make the ride bumpier. Driving and handling on the Model Y are really, really great though. The wheel is very responsive, so that coupled with instant torque on the accelerator makes this car feel amazing to drive. It also has really great regenerative braking, which enables one pedal driving. When you let off the pedal, the car begins braking, so once you're used to it, you rarely need to move over to the brake pedal. One feature Tesla added recently was the option to have one pedal driving in all conditions. In short, one pedal driving 
is enabled by regenerative braking, which takes the energy of braking and puts it back into the battery. If the battery is full or very cold, there is nowhere for that energy to go, so typically electric cars will drive like normal cars in these conditions. It can be jarring if you're not used to coasting, so now Tesla will automatically apply normal brakes to emulate one pedal driving in these conditions. Essentially, all you need to know is with a Tesla, you can have one pedal driving in all conditions by turning on this setting. The only complaint I have with driving in the Model Y is with the turn radius. It feels like it should have a much better turning radius than it does. Another quick thing to mention for the Model Y is the sound system. It's not Bose, Bowers & Wilkins, or any other top brand. It's actually just Tesla's own system, but it will surprise you at how great it sounds. It's one of the best systems I've ever heard in a vehicle, and sometimes I just go to my car to listen to music in it. It definitely won't disappoint, and I find it works great paired with hi-fi streaming from Tidal. There are a ton of features included in the Model Y, and I have included videos detailing those links below. Some of those include Sentry Mode, the security system that automatically films with the built-in cameras around the car if someone is getting too close to your car, live camera streaming to your phone, a built-in dash cam with four angles, games on screen, zoom calls with the interior camera, and the Tesla app. The Tesla app is incredibly powerful and allows you to do more than any other vehicle app can do. You can control many things from the car, check your car's location, precondition the climate, stream the cameras, and see stats for how much you're saving charging instead of using gas. It's an incredibly powerful tool that Tesla is constantly improving. One of the largest features of the Model Y comes with Autopilot. This is included by default and is what I recommend people stick with. Tesla sells enhanced Autopilot and FSD, but unless you really want to beta test, I don't find them worth the money, and they are able to be purchased at any time later through the Tesla app with no hardware upgrade necessary. I especially don't find them worth it because of how powerful the included Autopilot system is though. On a freeway or well-marked road, you can turn on Auto Steer, and the car automatically drives for you and keeps you centered in your lane. In my experience with the Tesla Vision, system, this has functioned incredibly well and takes a layer of stress off of a long drive. My main complaints here though are that sometimes it will wait too long to brake. It will brake safely, but later and faster than I prefer. Then sometimes when in stop and go traffic, the car will speed up incredibly fast when traffic is going again. It can almost feel like it's just flooring it, which is completely ridiculous in stop and go traffic. I find myself taking over most in these situations or when the freeway is getting especially chaotic. The one feature I wish Tesla sold outside of a $6,000 package is auto lane change. That enables you to signal and have the car change lanes for you on the freeway while remaining in autopilot. With the standard system, you have to manually change lanes and then re-engage autopilot. It's not a big deal at all, but it's very nice with auto lane change. Most of that is pretty positive for the Model Y. There are things we'd love to see improved here and there in software, but overall, it's a great car. Is it 100% perfect though? No. Tesla has a reputation for issues, and while this has dramatically improved, it still exists to a degree. For my Model Y, I really love the reduced road noise enabled with double-paned windows and added felt throughout the car, but I have noticed a low rumble when on the freeway. That annoying low rumble comes from the hatchback and can be a part of hatchbacks but shouldn't exist in a car at this price range. If I'm listening to music, I don't notice it, but it's louder than it should be still. Then in my passenger side door, I have a rattle that developed around three months in. I've had rattles in other Teslas, and they usually sound plastic, but this one is something metal within the door, so that's new for me. I'll be taking this to Tesla service soon. In the past, I've had trouble with Tesla service, but I'm again happy to report that I can now get an appointment fairly quickly, and I've had issues fixed quickly. I expect this one to be fairly easy, but I don't expect them to be able to fix the trunk rumbling issue, as it's likely the way these cars are. Depending on your area, Tesla service could be fairly easy to deal with or be frustrating. The other issues come with software. I've had mixed reliability with Apple Music lately, and I found myself re-logging in every few days. This could be a Tesla or Apple bug, but exists in the car nonetheless. For autopilot, people experience various amounts of phantom braking. This is where the Tesla Vision system messes up and thinks it needs to slam on the brakes when there's nothing to brake for. I've had this issue twice on this Model Y. Neither time was significant, and I was ready for it as I'm supposed to be, but it's frustrating and makes you lose faith in the autopilot system if it can just brake for no reason. Then if I had a 2023 Model Y, I'd be very frustrated that I don't have basic parking sensors. I really don't agree with Tesla's approach to remove the sensor and then deliver the feature in software at some point in the near future. In my opinion, it's something to look out for because you really have no idea how good their parking sensor replacement will be if and when it arrives. Then there are just things I'd love to see changed on the Model Y. The front trunk should be powered. I wouldn't mind if not for the hood having to be closed ever so gently when you do so manually. My wife would also love a handle in this car, 
As a passenger, there is no handle to help you get in or out of the car or to hold on to when taking a quick turn. I understand the removal of this from a minimal design perspective, but the function is definitely missed. Then for rear passengers, the rear seats are just okay for comfort. There's a good amount of leg room, but the seats themselves leave some to be desired and definitely contrast how comfortable the front seats are. This may or may not be important to you. I wish the Model Y had ventilated, cooled seats in addition to heated seats. In the summer, my back definitely gets warm in this car. I also wish the Model Y had a 360 camera option. Tesla likely has the cameras and processing capability to do it already in the vehicle, but they haven't delivered it. Many other cars today have this feature, and especially with the hopefully temporary removal of parking sensors, this would be extremely helpful. Charging is often a big question for first time EV buyers. I'll say this, if you will be driving less than around 200 or 250 miles a day and are able to charge at home, this car is a no brainer. You can either use the Tesla wall connector or mobile connector to plug in when you get home and you'll be good to go the next morning. For me, this has saved me a ton of time compared to going out of my way to get gas. If you road trip on top of that, you'll likely find that Tesla superchargers have you covered for where you need to go as well, and I definitely fall into this category. I'm usually home, but I've driven the Model Y from Los Angeles to Seattle, Washington, Las Vegas, Northern California, San Diego, Arizona, Bakersfield, and more without issue. I've also never encountered a broken charger. Supercharging can add a little time to your trips, as stops often take around 15 to 25 minutes, but I usually find that I enjoy Enjoy that time to stretch, grab something to eat, and use the restroom while the car is charging up. It's also something I think helps me to avoid driving fatigue since I'm often someone who wants to get something done all at once. Overall, there are clear reasons why the Model Y is such a popular car. It packs a lot of great, reliable features and now comes in at a very competitive price for the market it's in. It's also available, and Tesla is only planning to ramp up production further throughout 2023. Overall, it's my favorite car because it combines a fun car to drive with great technology, reliable and plentiful supercharging, and practical storage space throughout. I am, however, curious to see what happens in the near future with these parking sensors. In the meantime, if you want to see my full review of the Hyundai Ioniq, 5, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.